It's National Signing Day, and Alabama once again lands an impressive class. Of course, Nick Saban just continues to bring in some of the top talent. We're going to talk about it on this episode of Tide Talk Live. What is up, everybody? Welcome in to Tide Talk Live on the Believe Network. Stacy Blackwood and Jake Thomas here giving our reactions to Alabama's signing class here in 2024. Another impressive class from Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide. Jake, uh, I know it's been a wild time in your personal life, but and it's a wild day for, in, in, on signing day for the Crimson Tide. How you doing on this Wednesday evening, buddy? Man, I'm doing great. I'm, uh, you know, it's Personal stuff, it, it's it, it's okay right now, but uh, you know, I will say I know we're going to talk about the uh, about the signing day, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell everybody I'm not going to be up to watch that basketball game tonight. It's starting at midnight. There's no way I can make it. Of course, this this is recording, so it's already going to be you know over with by the time you play. But still, it, it's just too too late. But man, what a great class Alabama just just signed. No man. doubt about it. I, I can't I can't wait to kind of dive into these guys, mm-hmm. Jake and. You mentioned the late tip for the basketball team. I, I don't know how they even think that's legal to, <laughs> to to make a game tip off that late. And I know they're playing out on the West Coast, but they, they got to keep in mind that Alabama is in central time zone. Right. And, you know, that's where all their basketball fans are at. Just, it's just kind of – I don't know. It's not very smart by whoever decided to make that tip off that time. But it is what it is. As we record this on, on a Wednesday evening at around 6.30 p.m., uh, you know, Alabama's sitting at number two right now in the recruiting rankings, Jake. Uh, probably that's where they're going to finish at. Another impressive mm-hmm. class for Nick Saban in Alabama. Uh, can't wait to talk about that. But as always, to, please do subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Also free and available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, Amazon Music. Just wherever you find podcasts, you can find Tide Talk Live. So just search there. Uh, you can see our Twitter handles down there below, or X, whatever you want to call it now. I'm going to keep calling it Twitter. I don't know about right. you, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you you can find us there. We're also on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Just search Tide Talk Live, and you'll be able to find us on all those social media platforms. Jake, as we look at this class, uh, impressive. I mean, impressive to say the least. Look at uh, that. Just, uh, and I think you got to start with Julian saying, Jake. He's he's the top player in the class, uh, the top quarterback in the country uh, from from California. There at Carl, Carlsbad. A guy who obviously is not going to have to play right away, Jake. I mean, Milrose already announced that he's coming back next season, and now Julian Sayan has a chance to to learn the system. Uh, you know, getting getting the weight room. You can see he weighs one ninety. He needs to be up above two hundred pounds uh, to play in the SEC, in my opinion. But uh, so uh, he ha- he has time to develop, Jake, and and not just his game, but his body, physically, mentally, and and you look at Julian Sayan, Jake. I think the first thing that just jumps out is just his accuracy, Uh, his ability to throw the ball, you know, on all three levels in in an accurate, his timing, his anticipation. He is just a pure uh, passer, but he also has some athletic ability as well, just an elite talent there at the quarterback position. Yeah, you know, Julian Sagan has been – it seems like he's been locked in for a while uh, with Alabama. And, you know, I've been very impressed with some, you know, some of his film. I mean, like you said, the accuracy. Uh, he's very athletic. And and like you said, he can come in and, and learn the system. He's Since Milrow has said he's coming back, he's not going to be thrown into a situation where he's going to have to learn like that and then get on the field. He, he can he can sit back. He can learn from Milrow. Miro has been a great ambassador this season and, and will be next season. He's going to help help that QB room grow. He's really going to help Julian saying uh, saying out next year as well. And really, honestly, Julian say really don't need much more much more you know help because I mean he, he's coming in and and he's already looks like he's going to be you know a first round draft pick in a few years. I mean he's that good. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I have I have high expectations for saying mm-hmm. uh, that quarterback room next year is going to be among the best in college football. If if the guys that come back or that can come back do come back, you know, you look at Milrow, he's obviously going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Uh, but Ty Simpson's might be hanging around. Dylan Longer might be hanging around. Mm-hmm. You bring in Julian Sayan, Eli Holstein's still in the mix. So 
uh, just that that room oh. would be incredibly deep and talented for Alabama and Tommy Reese. So uh, great to have Sane on board. Uh, to me, without question, the best quarterback in this class. I know Dylan Raiola, who flipped from Georgia to Nebraska, of course, is a Nebraska legacy player. But uh, I just I just think Sane is, without question, the best quarterback in this class. Yeah, I agree with uh, that, Stacey. You know, Raiola is really good as well. But I, I don't know, Sane just has that it factor that you don't see. And, I mean, I, I'm, I'm confidently saying that I think he's going to surpass Bryce as – probably a guy like a generational top talent and Tua as well because, I mean, he's just that good. I agree, Jake. I, expectations are high for saying, and, and the good news for him is he doesn't have to come in right away and be the guy. He can right. learn, develop, and get better, uh, you know, learn that album system. And the good news is he's actually already on campus, been there this week. I think he got there last weekend. So uh, he, he's been able to kind of participate uh, I think mostly in shorts. I don't even think he's been able to put any, on any pads yet because they're those freshman enrollees have to wait a certain amount of time before they can put on pads. But he's already there practicing with the team, learning the playbook in those meeting rooms. So Julian Sayan is just a, an elite talent. You look there at the, the next five star, Jake Jalen and um, You know, a lot of people have him as a as an athlete on three. List him here as a cornerback. He's going to play corner at Alabama. Mm -hmm. He played. Back in high school as well, Jake. Just any time he was on the field, he was the best athlete on the field. And if you look at Mbakwe, he just has he has the upside that you're looking for when you're when you're looking at cornerbacks at the next level, Jake. Five eleven, he's probably going to grow to be about six foot before it's all said and done. He'll play about one ninety while he's at Alabama. So really good corner size, great speed, great athleticism, and a guy once he kind of is is developed under Nick Saban and Travaris Robinson, I think has a chance to be a really special corner for Alabama. Yeah, I agree, agree Stacey. I got to see him uh, when they played their high school uh, championship game, and he went up against um, another guy who hadn't signed it with Alabama but is committed, Ryan Williams. And Williams in that game for at, at start was just dominating, but they, they moved Mbakwe uh, over there to him, and they kind of slowed him down, uh, Jalen did. So – I'm really excited about him as well. He's a guy that, you know, he may be able to come in and, and, and start his freshman year at at, uh, at corner if if needed. We got a lot of talent coming back. We got, you know, with with Taryn Arnold potentially going to the draft, we know that Kool-Aid is going. I would feel confident if if Jalen steps in and, and you know, as a freshman because uh, I think he's going to be another guy, like you said, is going to be – a, a legacy player at Alabama when he's when his time is done. Yeah, uh, you're talking about corner for next year, Jake, mm -hmm. and and you know there's a chance with Kool Aid gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think Terry on Arnold's gone as well. There's there's too. some mock drafts that even have him ranked as the top corner in the entire in the class. So in in the NFL draft class. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a chance there's going to be two spots open at corner for Alabama. But, you know, they, they recruited some guys last year, Jaleel Hurley, you know, mm -hmm. Antonio Kite's still there, a redshirt freshman this season. You know, Des Ricks, a, a freshman five-star from last year's recruiting cycle. So there's a lot of young talent. Of course, Trey Amos will be back yep. next year as well. So um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of competition there for that. I think Trey Amos is going to have one side locked down, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of competition for that other cornerback spot. And I do think Mbakwe has a chance to compete for, for one of those roles as well. And, and you got to think that he could be a – a really valuable special teams player for Alabama as a Absolutely. true freshman. Absolutely. He, I, I can see him being, being dominant as a true freshman on special teams. Yeah. C Caleb Oldham, Jake, a, a tight end from, from Georgia. Uh, an Amari Nyblack top player, Jake, mm -hmm. who is probably already bigger than what Nyblack was, you know, at this point in his career coming out of high school. Uh, so I think as far as his, his ability to make plays in space in the passing game, there's no denying that he's he's as good as it gets from the tight end position, whether that's in high school, college, or even at the at the NFL level. He has elite playmaking ability as a receiver. But we all know what Nick Saban wants his tight ends to do. They they have to they they, they have to be able to block Jake. They have to be right. able to play on the line of scrimmage, put their hand in the dirt, and play some physical football. So if Odom can come in, put on some more muscle mass, become a more physical top player, which I believe he can then he is a future star for Alabama in this offense. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. He He's one that I've been uh, keeping up with as well. I'm excited to see what he can do. Uh, he, I feel like him and Nyblack are going to be a force in a few years together, uh, especially, you know, when Nyblack becomes a junior and he's 
you know, probably a sophomore, man, that they, they're going to be di- a dynamic duo for sure. Yeah. And I just want to run through, uh, I don't want to run through every single player, but uh, so we're going to skip Zabian Brown. I think a guy who's a really good player, one of the more underrated players in the country. I know on three, the industry has him as a, as the number 54 player. I really like Zabian Brown. I think he has a chance to be a really good player. And another guy who could come in and compete for a potential spot there. Uh, in the defensive backfield for yeah. Alabama. But Kevin Riley, Jake, a running back that Alabama actually flipped today from Miami, been committed to Miami for a good while now. Uh, you see there in his rankings a top 75 prospect uh, across the board in the industry rankings, the number three running back in the country. A guy, Jake, that I believe is getting better. I thought his sophomore and junior film, when I watched I'm like, yeah, he, he's an SEC type, type of back. He, he has really good potential, can be a really good player. Then I watched his senior tape, which just really come out a few days ago, Jake, and I, I watched that, and I, I just seen a little bit different player than what I saw with his previous tapes. This is a guy who is explosive, uh, a home run hitter, can make uh, make guys miss at the line of scrimmage, a patient runner, and I think he has a chance to be a really good player. And like Julian saying, the good news for him is he doesn't have to come in and be the guy. He can come in, learn the ropes, learn the system, learn his job, become more physical, get college ready from a physicality standpoint. And by the time he's a sophomore uh, or, or, you know, a red shirt sophomore or just a, a true sophomore, he could be in that running back rotation and, and be a, a solid contributor for Alabama. Yeah, I was really happy to see, you know, him flip today because, I you know, I've been keeping an eye on him for a while. And and great great for Nick Saban and the, and the coaching staff to keep their eye on him. Even though he was committed, they stayed on him. And he's right there in, in the in the neck of the woods with saving the boys, right, because he's from Tuscaloosa County from the Northport area. So, you know, that was a big pickup uh, at, on this signing day, I felt like. Yeah, really huge, huge flip for Alabama on signing day to, to keep the, the top running back in the state, you know, at home, close to home, like you mentioned, being mm-hmm. from uh, the Northport area there in Tuscaloosa County. So a really good player. I think – a guy in, in like two years, Alabama fans are like, "Yeah, I forgot we kind of signed that dude." <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, and and I think I think as far as futures go, and I'm talking about three years down the road, the next guy, Jake Jeremiah Beeman. I I, I look at him and uh, a national top 100 player, number 10 defensive lineman in in, in the country. Uh, he he was verified to be just a shade under six four for the start of his senior season and weighed in at 250. Uh, reports are now that he's around 6'4", 270, maybe 275. I think this is a guy, Jake, that after two full seasons or two full years at Alabama in the weight room, uh, you know, just continue to grow his body and mature because he has he has the bone structure to gr- to be a really physical, physically imposing player. I think by the time he's a, a redshirt sophomore and he's probably around 6'4", 290, you're looking at a guy who could be a really impactful player for Alabama. He plays fast. He plays hard. Uh, he has a relentless motor. Uh, just a really, really good player. Almost, I, I think he could have a similar career to what Justin Aboibe had. Uh, as far as you see, you know, when he's at the end of his career, he is one of the top defensive linemen in, in the entire country. And I think Jeremiah Beeman has that type of a potential. But it is going to take him – a couple of years to continue to develop. And, you know, the defensive line, that's a developmental position anyway. So uh, I, I just really think in about three years, we're going to look back at Jeremiah Beam and be like, man, that was a really good get uh, considering he was, you know, the number 10 player at his position. Yeah, he he he's going to be really good, like you said, in a few years. He, uh, like you said, the Renless Motor, uh, he, he explodes off the ball. I, I've noticed that with some of his films. So I'm excited to see what he can develop and what he can be in the future. feel like him and a, and a guy from last year's class has played a little bit this year, Jane Smith, going, going to be a, a great duo on the defensive line you know, in a few years. No, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. And and looking at the – I want to talk – we get to Casey Poe there, Jake, and I just mm-hmm. want to talk about the offensive line class as a whole. And, and there's there's one word – that that just describes each of the signees and it's just tough jake they're all right. tough they're all they all have that you know that motor that drive of that you see in a tyler booker you see in a Jaden roberts a jc latham a caden proctor just that mental toughness and and just wanting to whoop that guy across from them all those guys have it you're talking about casey poe 
you're talking about uh, – let me get down to the other ones. William Sanders, uh, just mm-hmm. another good player. Uh, there's – you know, Joseph Ayanada, I- I- another guy who is re- – look there, the industry <clears> – <throat> he's bar- he's not even a top 500 player, Jake. But I'm telling you, when he's a redshirt junior, if he can, if he sticks it out, Jake, he is going to be a nasty offensive lineman. Yeah. Just I, I, nasty is another good word to kind of describe this offensive line class. While it doesn't really have the star power that we saw last year with guys like you know Caden Proctor on it, um, I, I really like the group they have this year, especially from a mentality standpoint. Yeah, guys like Casey Poe, and, and you mentioned him, a guy I've been really high on, uh, William Sanders. William Sanders was a three-star starting out, and, and you know, a lot of people was like, why, why are we going after three stars when we can get four- and five-star players? Because I knew William Sanders was eventually going to be a four-star get, and and I've I've watched he, watched a lot of his film. Uh, Casey Poe as well. I really like, like their motor, like you said, Stacey. They got that mental toughness. They they've got the drive. They they just had the Bama attitude that you you want with offensive linemen. And these guys they come in and a, and add depth for one. But they're another guy. There are other guys who can come in and just learn the playbook. They don't have to step in and, and be elite right away. They can learn and develop. And when when their time comes, man, they're going to be they're going to be a massive unit with those, especially those three guys. I, I'm very excited. Uh, to see what the future holds for the, for all three of them. Yeah, you mentioned William Sanders by name, Jake, and, and mm-hmm. I'm going to say this. I think when it's all said and done from this particular class, I think Sanders will be the best of the bunch. Mm-hmm. I really believe that. And you see on three, their, their specific rankings, they have him as the number four interior offensive lineman. And like you mentioned, you know, I don't know, maybe not even six months ago, he probably wasn't even a top 500 prospect. Right. And you see there he's at number 107. So you know what on three thinks of him? A really, really good player, and and I, I really think he's going to be the best of the bunch in terms of the offensive linemen that that were signed in this class. Yeah, you see right down there the other the other recruiting departments don't even have him listed on the national level, so it's yeah. kind of a sleeper here. And yep, I mean William Sanders, his film they from where he's where he's coming from, they run the ball a lot. He's 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 a monster running the ball. It feels like he's going to have to develop his feet work, his footwork to get the passing uh, blocking down. But once he does, man, I agree with you. William Sanders just has that it factor. I feel like on the offensive line and uh, he's going to be a very special player in a few years. Yeah. You, you run down the list, the rest of the list, Peyton Woodyard, really good player flip from Georgia from a couple months ago, Amari Jefferson, a guy that 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 kind of rose in the ranking late as well. Mm-hmm. You see there that on three has him as the number seventeen receiver, a top one hundred prospect, a really good player out of Tennessee. Uh, Grimsley, our long, sticky cornerback uh, there from Tampa at 6'2", 185, a guy who who's a really really good player uh, may end up you know becoming a safety if he continues to grow because at 6'2", 185, he is a massive corner. So mm-hmm. uh, just, but he has, re- he has, he has, has corner skills though. So yeah, I, I really like Grimsley as well. <clears throat> uh, you see Jay Sean Ross, a guy who just committed, I guess it was yesterday, Jake on Tuesday, he committed mm-hmm. uh, from Missouri, one of the top players uh, from Missouri. So uh, really good. The only edge player that album has signed in this class so far. So really interesting, but you got, you got to, think that that was going to happen anyways after what they brought in last year with Keon Keeley, Yonze Pierre, uh, the the kid from Carver High School. So just you knew this class was going to take a little dip in that area. But Mm -hmm. getting a guy like Jay Sean Ross, who, you know, is almost a a guy who needs a couple years to develop. You see it 6'3", only 220. Uh, The fact that he's going to be able to sit behind some guys will help him. And and it looks like with him coming in a part of this class, he's not afraid to wait, wait his turn and, you know, kind of develop under, under the album program. Yeah. uh, I I feel like he's going to develop and, and learn. Uh, We don't have to have him right away. That that's why I feel like a lot of these guys are going to be in a situation. Alabama was so deep at every level, but and young and young and and young. Uh, But there are some situations where I feel like some of these guys, you know, like I like you and saying he he can come in tomorrow and start day one at Alabama, but he he can develop and, and be be the next guy. That's a lot of these guys are the same. Uh, I think they're going to be really what really good 
when they when they get called upon, but it's just going to be a few years. Yeah, and and the next guy, Jake Arian Hampton, another flip from today from Texas to Alabama, uh, a huge get in my opinion, Jake. I, I know that the the rankings won't suggest that, but I, I think Arian Hampton's one of the most underrated kids in this class. You see, uh, on three has him as uh, you know the number eight athlete in this class. Uh, the, and and you see, Rivals has him as the fifth ranked athlete in this class. So this dude, this dude is a football player. He's gonna, he's probably gonna play corner, Alabama or receiver. Can do either one of them at an elite level. And I really like the fact that Alabama was able to flip him here on signing day. Really good player. Yeah, I was excited to see his name uh, being flipped today as well. I, I think he's gonna be a special player. Yeah, I want to talk about two Alabama natives that signed with Alabama today. Uh, Red Morgan. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensive back, a safety, and then also the legacy player, Drake or Patrick Jr. Jake. Mm-hmm. First of all, do you feel old or what? Yeah, I know. I'm like Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. I'm like, I remember watching his dad play at Alabama and winning championships, and now his son is coming through the ranks. What in like I, I felt my hair get grayer as as, as I read <laughs> that, you know. I was like, my gosh. And 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 speaking of Kirkpatrick Jr. Jake, his rankings really doesn't signify what type of player he is. This is a late bloomer. Uh, You're talking about a guy, to me, after watching his sophomore and junior film, uh, he looked like a guy who belonged at Troy, if I'm just speaking candidly. Mm -hmm. But as young athletes do, he developed, he matured, he physically grew, Mm -hmm. and he got better. And – Watching his senior tape, there's no question he has a place at Alabama. Mm-hmm. And and he's a guy who we we obviously know it's in his DNA. I mean, his his dad was one of the best cornerbacks Alabama's ever had. Yep. Had a great NFL career with the Cincinnati Bengals as well. So uh, you know, Drake Patrick is is better than uh the the national seven, number seven twenty player. And but he only has one season of evidence of that, and that's his senior season. And you look back at at what he did in the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game, Jake, where I think he had two interceptions, a block punt, or a, a couple of forced fumbles, a fumble recovery. Just just an incredible stat line from Kirkpatrick. And if it wasn't for the day that Ryan Williams had a receiver, mm-hmm. he would have been the MVP of the game. So don't let those three stars fool you, and, and don't let him – being Drake or Patrick's son fool you either. He didn't just get a scholarship offer because of who he is. He got a scholarship offer because the dude can play and he belongs right. to Alabama. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I agree. Don't, you know, not because of just his name. He he's a special talent. And like you say, he was a late bloomer. He um, uh, you know, I don't I don't even think Alabama through the summer had even offered him until the season started and and because they saw the improvement, the the growth that that he had through the season, and I mean, it's like like two or three days after they offered him, he he committed just like that, you know. So you know, it, I, it's not because of the name; it's because of what the player he has potential to become, and that's the reason why he's at Alabama. Well, well here's a little scoop on, on <clears throat> excuse me, on Kirkpatrick's uh, recruitment. He uh, obviously, like we mentioned, he was a late bloomer. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't really look like an SEC player in his in his freshman, sophomore, and junior tapes. Uh, had spent the summers kind of banged up a little bit. Uh, was not able to go to any kind of camps. And anybody that follows album recruiting understands that that <clears throat> Nick Saban doesn't offer many guys if they hadn't been at camp at Alabama. Right. Well, he was able to camp with Alabama this last summer, and that's where he earned his scholarship offer because of his of the play of the way he played during the camps there in Tuscaloosa over the summer. So, uh, but he was unable to do that the, the summers before because he was a little banged up. I think he had a shoulder injury, just a couple of different nagging injuries, and he was not able to compete at those camps. But he was able to do so this past summer. He earned an offer, committed, and then backed up that offer by having one of the best seasons in the state of Alabama for a defensive back. So, yeah. no, without question, he earned his offer to Alabama. And I'm excited to have him on board. Yeah, man, I, I'm excited to see what you know how he can develop because I think he's going to be a special player. And you know, not just because of, of his name, I, I think he's going to set his own legacy at Alabama. No doubt about it. these two guys right here, Jake Isaiah. I, I want to say you actually pronounce it Funga. 
-hmm. I know it doesn't look like that, but I'm pretty sure it's Funga. And then Justin Ankaronquo, uh, who's from Germany. And I, don't ever ask me to say that last name again. Yeah. Um, I really like both these dudes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Justin O has potential that is absolutely through the roof. Him and uh, the Steve, who I'm not going to say his last name either. <laughs> Uh, who Steve is originally from Cameroon, but he's Steve him. <laughs> he, he played his high school ball there in Canada and Quebec. So those two guys, actually these three guys right here mm -hmm. that you see in your picture right now, they, they have incredible potential. Mm -hmm. They really do incredible potential. Yeah. I'm excited to see how, what the future holds with the, with them guys, because, uh, you know, Fag, uh, Fonga, I think, is going to be a very special player. Uh, he's another guy on the defensive line. I think uh, he can learn, and, and he doesn't have to be called right away. He can learn and everything and, and then be that player when his time is called. Same way with Justin, same way with Steve. But I do think that they're going to be be great players in the future for Bama. All right, Jake, let's let's round it out with these these three guys on the bottom. Quentin Reese, he has not signed yet, but he is a hard commit. Ryan Williams, obviously, is a hard commit, has not signed yet. And then LT Overton, the, the Texas A&M transfer, uh, has not signed yet either. But all three of those guys, uh, I would expect all three to remain in the class. Um, obviously, Overton is, is transferring in, so I'm pretty sure that's basically a done deal. Yep. Um, Quentin Reese committed a couple months ago. Uh, you see they're out of Ramsey High School in Birmingham. Uh, honestly, not sure what all is going on in that situation exactly and why he hasn't signed yet. Maybe he's waiting for a certain thing. I, I cannot remember that off the top of my head. But Ryan Williams, Jake, a guy that has – I guess he hasn't done it, but fans have stirred the pot about mm -hmm. Ryan Williams ever since he reclassified to the 2024 class. You look at his rankings there, Jake. He in the industry standard, he's the number 12 player, and the dude's only a junior in high school. Jeez. Wow. I mean, the truth is, I, there's no, I have not seen a better player than Ryan Williams. Yeah. I don't care what class it is. In the last couple of years, he's the best player I've seen, regardless of position. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of noise of a possible flip to Auburn. I think it's just noise. I don't think it means anything. I think he's a gump. I think he's a Bama boy, and I mm -hmm. think he's going to stick with Alabama and sign with them uh, on February February 9th, which is his actual birthday, for those wondering. So mm -hmm. I think that's what he's going to end up doing, signing with Alabama on February 9th and then joining the Crimson Tide. So uh, excited to have Ryan Williams a part of this class because he's as elite as they come at the wide receiver position. You know, I as many as the great wide receiver, you know, that come through Alabama so far, he may be the best one that ever come come through uh, Alabama. I mean, he he has he has just unworldly talent, man. I mean, the the quickness as when he catches the ball and hit and hits the the Jets, man, he's gone. Nobody can catch him on the field. So that that twelve national ranking, I mean, he he ought to be number one. I mean, honestly, and he's he's <laughs> that good. Yeah, I, I really like Williams, Jake. He's a special talent, and we're not being hyperbolic just by saying he's one of the best players we've seen over the past couple of years. It's just true. true. Go watch the dude play. He He's explosive. He's fluid. He makes all the contested catches. He doesn't drop anything. He's, you know, he's, he's like Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs combined into one dude. He's just in a, a special talent, and <laughs> – and and I'm I'm serious. Even with all the talent that Alabama's going to have coming back in the receiver room next season, I, I don't see how this dude's not a starter from day one. Right. He is that special of a talent, Jake. And this guy's we're talking about a guy who shouldn't even be a part of this class. He's mm -hmm. really a class of 2025 guy, but he's he's obviously smart. He's going to graduate early, and he just has elite skills, Jake. And I, I cannot wait to see him wearing crimson and white. Man, you know, you think about about the class that that or, or the group we got coming back next year wide receiver. But I mean, you could you potentially have Isaiah Bond on one side with Ron Wills on the other. I don't, Ken, I don't know who's going to start. Kendrick Law coming in motion. Kendrick Law coming in motion. <laughs> Kobe Prentice and, and you know in the slot. I mean, 
who do you cover in that situation yeah. as as a defense? You know, and defense coordinator, how do you how do you game plan for that? I mean, it's a game plan mismatch, and and you know, I I'm not trying trying to trying to you know sound arrogant here, but the thing about it is why I don't think he's going to flip is Alabama has a, an established quarterback. Auburn has got quarterback issues, you know, at the yin yang right now. I mean, you really won't. You have Jalen Milrow that's going to throw to you next year. You're going to have Peyton Thorne that's going to throw to you next year. Well, and just look, right. just okay, let's look past that, Jake. Right. Let's look past that. Auburn mm-hmm. don't even have a quarterback. I mean, who's who they who they got behind Thorne? I, who knows? I think Robbie Ashford is in the transfer portal. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so there, there's no hope yeah. for the future, really. No. And you got Julian, Julian saying, Behind Dylan Miller, Lonergan, Ty Dylan Simpson, Lonergan. I mean, any of those guys are better than anything Auburn has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no I, I would go as to say that if Eli Holstein mm-hmm. was in Auburn right now, mm-hmm. he would be as good as they got at quarterback. Yeah, and he'd he probably he, started. He, he, he's potentially Alabama's fifth string quarterback. <laughs> That's insane. Now, to now think obviously, about. some of this stuff can change with the transfer portal, and who knows what's going to happen? You know, right. once Alabama's season's over with. But I mean. I, I just I'm with you, Jake. I, I'm not well, I know why guys are going there. It's NIL. I mean right. receivers. I mean yeah. and look, we all know that Hugh Freeze can recruit. He done right. it on this, but he's a snake old salesman, Jake. That ain't gonna last. This is not no, gonna last. No, nope. it's not gonna last. No. Nope. All right, Jake. I, I don't want to go any longer on this national signing day stuff. <laughs> yeah. As y'all can tell, I am battling sinus issues. I can't keep my clo- my throat cleared out. So I'm going to wrap it up before I completely lose my voice. But been a lot of fun to talk about these recruits. We'll talk more about these guys, you know, in the coming weeks, and we'll be diving in, obviously, to the to the yeah. semifinal matchup between Alabama and Michigan here over the next few days because we are now what, uh, gosh, 13, 12, 13 days yeah. away from kickoff. Yeah. So too far. cannot cannot wait for that. Going to be a lot of fun to talk about the Rose Bowl matchup between Alabama and Michigan. We're going to be doing that here on Tide Talk Live. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Like we said, also free and available wherever you find your podcast. Now on the Believe Network. Proud to be teamed up with those guys once again. All right, Jake. Been a lot of fun. Can't wait to do it. Make sure you jump in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on this signing class from Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide. But we'll see you guys real soon. And until then, roll Tide. Roll Tide.